Hi friends, I hope that you're having a safe and fun week. Before we get started, I wanna remind any adults watching that tomorrow I'll be releasing a version of this weekly message aimed at an older audience with a little bit more detail. I hope that you check it out. All right, let's get started. In church, we spend a lot of time talking about Jesus, about who he was, what kinds of amazing things he spent his time doing, about his love for everyone. In church, we sing songs about Jesus. In Sunday school, we read stories about Jesus. Simply put, we talk about Jesus a lot. And that makes sense. There wouldn't be any church at all if it wasn't for Jesus. Now, before we read today's Bible story, why don't we take a minute to think about people in our lives who have shared stories about Jesus with us, who have shared how learning about Jesus and following Jesus has changed their lives. Maybe it's a parent or a grandparent who read you a Bible story. Maybe it's pastors Pam and Ginger who give messages during church. Maybe it's Ms. Karen or Mr. Leo who teach you during Sunday school. Who has talked to you about Jesus? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Great job. Since we're thinking about people who have shared about following Jesus, today I'd like to talk about the word witness. Now, witness is a word you probably don't hear very often. It's one of those churchy words that we say in church, but not in very many other places. So when you hear it in church, you might be a little confused. You might not really know what witness means. Most simply, witness just means telling what you know to be true. So you could be a witness about all sorts of things. You could be a witness about what you had for breakfast this morning. You could be a witness about your favorite cartoon. You could be a witness about a cool new toy you got. All you'd have to do to witness is spread the word about something you care about. But when we witness in church, we aren't usually talking about breakfast or cartoons. We're talking about the wonderful story of the life and resurrection of Jesus. As Christians, one of the things we are asked to do is to show others how following Jesus has changed our lives and could change the whole world. The Bible gives some pretty great examples of people who are really good at witnessing. One of the best was a man named Paul. Now, no matter how tough things got, Paul would always proclaim that he was a follower of Jesus. Last week, we started reading a letter by Paul to a church in a faraway place called Philippi. There we learned about how important it is to be thankful. This week, we're gonna continue that same letter and see how Paul witnesses, even in circumstances where that might not be so easy. You see, as we saw last week, Paul is writing this letter from jail. Some people were not very happy that he was following Jesus. But is that gonna stop Paul from spreading the message? No, it is not. Now, if you wanna follow along, we're going to turn to the book of Philippians, which is in the New Testament, which is the second half of the Bible. It's one of the letters, so you have to flat flip past all the Gospels and past the Acts, the story about the very first Christians, and past a bunch of other letters written by Paul, too. But you'll get there eventually. Don't worry if it takes you a second. It's a pretty tiny book, so it's easy to miss. If you have trouble, maybe an adult can help you find it. Once you find Philippians, we're going to start right near the beginning in chapter one. So let's look for our big number one. I'm going to start reading from verse 12. So next, look for the little number 12. So we're looking for the big number one and the little number 12. Let's start. I want to report to you, friends that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. Instead of being silenced, the message has actually prospered. All the soldiers here and everyone else too found out that I'm in jail because of Jesus. That piqued their curiosity and now they've learned all about him. Not only that, 
But most of the followers of Jesus here have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever, speaking out fearlessly about God, about the Messiah, Jesus. It's true that some here preach Christ because with me out of the way, they think they'll step into the spotlight. But the others do it with the best heart in the world. One group is motivated by pure love, knowing that I am here defending the message, wanting to help. The others, now that I'm out of the picture, are merely greedy, and they're hoping to get something out of it for themselves. Their motives are bad. They see me as their competition, and so the worse it goes for me, the better they think it goes for them. So how am I supposed to respond? I've decided that I don't really care about their motives, whether mixed or bad. Every time one of them opens his mouth, Christ is, Christ is proclaimed, so I just cheer them on. And I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Through your faithful prayers and the generous response of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do in and through me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. They didn't shut me up. They gave me a pulpit. What an amazing story. People didn't want Paul to spread the message that Jesus is Lord. They didn't want him to witness. They didn't want to hear about how Paul was a follower of Jesus and how Jesus was changing the whole world. So they threw Paul in prison to shut him up. But did that stop Paul? Not at all. Pretty soon, Paul was even preaching to the prison guards. This is a guy you can't stop. So how could we be more like Paul? Maybe we could tell others how amazing Jesus is and how we are followers of Jesus. We could talk about how much Jesus loves the whole world and how he wants to make the world a place of peace, where everyone cares for one another, where no one goes hungry, and where no one fights. Now, if you are like me, you might not be going out very much right now. You probably aren't going to school or to play with friends like you usually do. You might feel stuck like Paul, but Paul shows us that even if we feel a little stuck, we can still witness. We can still spread the word about Jesus' love. So maybe you could talk to a parent or a grandparent, a sibling or a cousin, or maybe a friend on the phone or on the computer. Maybe you can be a witness simply by being the kind and loving person that I know that you are. You can do it. As always, I'd like to end with a repeat after me prayer. So I'll say a bit of the prayer and then I'm gonna leave a gap so that you can join in too. Here we go. Dear God, we are so thankful of people like Paul who show us how to be a witness. how to spread your love to the whole world. Help us to be a witness today and every day. In your name we pray, amen. All right, friends, thanks for, thanks for coming and spending this morning with me. I hope that you have a wonderful, safe, and fun week this week. I'll see you next Sunday.